Um, I got involved in Monsters. I'd met James and Al, the producers. Um, they had distributed a film that I'd worked on called In Search of Midnight Kiss. And met with them, and then they gave me a buzz or rang me up one day and said, would you, would you be interested in doing this this film? It's going to be all improvised. And, you know, I was like, well, what's the premise of it? And he was like, well, we're going to be down in Mexico, shooting in Mexico about a, a couple of some sort. Because um, I was trying to help him cast it at the time. I didn't think I was going to be available. And and I was like, you know, what, what about these guys? Or what about these guys? Or, you know, here's these couples. He's like, no, 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 no. And then... I forget what it was, but my availability came up at the, for October, and they're like, well, would you be into it? I'm like, well, sure, like, who's directing it? And he sent me over Gareth's stuff, uh, his sh a short film that he had done, uh, Factory, Factory Farm, and uh, Attila the Hun. And I was, I was floored, man. I was blown away at, at the effects that he had done on, on Attila. And... Um, I was like, sure, like, let's give it a go. It sounds incredibly dangerous and incredibly stupid, and I don't know any other producer that would take on a project such as. So sure, let's, let's go for it. Gareth came over, flew to our house, uh, met with us. We chatted a bit about uh, the project and the, the outline that he had put together at the time. It was like four pages, and it ended up being about, I think about, at the end of it, it was like 12 to 14 pages. And uh, read the outline, just kind of hashed out some of the story points and stuff, and... We worked together, me, him, and Whitney, of just ideas that we had and characters that we wanted to play and, and, and what have you. And then within three months, we were off and running, shooting down in Mexico. I mean, I was excited about it. It was something completely new, completely different. Um, the improvising thing, um, I wasn't taken back at it at first, but I do remember like thinking, oh, well, that'll be no problem. We'll just improvise our whole way through it. And then I didn't realize how difficult that would be when you're improvising on things that you can't see. Um, you know, Gareth would be yelling things to you, such as, you know, F-16 plane going over your head, you know, Black Hawk helicopter off in the distance, go there, photograph that, monster carcass on the ground here. And it's like you don't know where what you're looking at. And that part of it was incredibly bizarre. But And I kept saying, like, well, how far is it? Or what does it look like? And he was like, just wherever you photograph, I will put it there. So just just know to your left or to your right or above you. And, like, wherever you look, it'll, I'll, I'll put it in the shot. And so it was really bizarre for me to work it like that, as well as he, he doesn't use tracking points for CGI, which just blows my mind. I still don't understand how he does that. He goes, like, it's all floating camera, right? and he doesn't shoot any plates. So I was just kind of like, how is this all going to come together? Like, and, and I was just floored when I saw it of how, how seamless it was. Being that there was no script, um, we, it was just all backstory and, and, and research on photojournalism. And um, I went up to the woods for like two weeks and just kind of hung out up there and shot some photography, read some books on photography, and uh, read a bunch of books on war photography journalism. And so it was mostly just spending a lot of time alone. I watched a couple documentaries when I got back on war photography and journalism, and I noticed that they're all really boring people. I mean, obviously they've seen so much stuff, but they're all very secluded and quiet and just kind of in their own heads. And I was just kind of like, well, that's not going to make for a good character that's interesting as somebody that, such as that. And so uh, a buddy of mine, Andrew Calder, um, I, he's always got these great stories. He's a photographer as well, but he's, he's everything. He's a photographer, he's a writer, he's a director. I mean, He's a sailor. He, I mean, he knows how to do everything. And I remember talking to him one time, and he was like, you know, I was like, oh, the, the Baja 1000. Have you seen this documentary, Dust to Glory? And he was like, I was in the Baja 1000 one time. And I was like, really? And he was just this guy that had just kind of done everything. And I was like, that's kind of who I see the character as. Is 
is not necessary necessarily a a character of Andrew, which I did end up taking his name, but more of somebody who'd done done it all. He'd been everywhere and just done anything. And uh, I sat down with Andrew and chatted him up for about five hours and recorded it and then went back and then just took bits and pieces from that conversation and incorporated them into the character. Well, working with Gareth was, was, was awesome. I mean, he's super, super calm, super chill. It's hard because, like, he doesn't really get excited. He's very English. Uh, I recall on the last day of shooting, I was like, so what do you think? Like, are you happy? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm over the moon. I'm like, well, all right, well, don't, don't get too excited about it. But um, he was great. He was very uh, nurturing, you know. Um, he really held our hand through this whole thing, and... You know, when there's parts when we get frustrated about what we were doing and like not being able to see something, I'm like, well, what's it mean? He would take the time to stop and explain everything and draw things out. And he'd sketch up maps for us so we could geographically know exactly what we are doing and where we are and where we are headed. And But all in all, I mean, he was a, a, a fantastic director. I mean, I had a great time working with him. Um, he was very patient and uh, incredibly, uh, incredibly inspiring. You know, just through every through every bit of the process. I I love it. I mean, like honestly, I prefer I prefer that much more than than a larger crew. I feel like we get more done. Um, everybody's working together. Um, everybody's a part of the creative process. It's not just one person telling you where to stand, what to do, what to say. Uh, everybody's open to new ideas. Um, it was great. I mean, I remember at one point we were in Mexico and we were, I was watching the Hearts of Darkness, the Coppola thing, the, and they had Coda, the other uh, documentary that they did when he was sh shooting the other movie with Tim Roth. And he's yelling at these people because everyone's late and it's not going right. And he goes, what are all these people doing here? Why are we waiting? All we need is two actors, a camera, a sound man, and a van like that. And the camera pans over the van and it's like, I'm like, that's the van we're in. And that is, that's all you need is a camera, the actors, and a sound guy. And hit the road running and go make the movie.